Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. I'm Alana Chargalov of Fison. Thanks for watching. Today is Friday, March 17th, and St. Patrick's Day. I've got a little bit of green eyeshadow on, but in any case, I'm sure there's luck and blessings in every day for all of us anyway. After this morning's headlines, Polly brings us a recap and reactions from Governor Lourdes Leon Guerrero's State of the Island Address. Then, Master of Chamorro Dance Vince Regis tells us about the new National Indigenous Performing Arts initiative out of Guam, Kaha. Headlining the Marianas variety, the House of Representatives will consider today House Resolution 23-6, which calls for the reduction of the monthly allowances of House members from Tinian and Rhoda. Under current House rules adopted on January 9th, Tinian and Rhoda representatives are each entitled to $5,000 monthly allowance to defray the cost of food, lodging, and other incidental expenses incurred by reason of attending to legislative business in Saipan. HR 23 3-6 strikes out this provision, which means that all House members representing the three senatorial districts will receive the same monthly allowance of $2,500. In other news, the Department of Public Safety has placed 28 officers on administrative duty for unjustified overtime hours. According to an official statement from DPS on Thursday, it is investigating the matter as a criminal case. The DPS transition report submitted to the Palacios Apatang administration stated that upon reviewing timesheets and OT requests from January 2022 to date, it was learned that DPS had been paying out excessive OT accruals for the same group of officers, some high-ranking officers and certain lower-ranking ones as well. Clement Bermudez, acting commissioner of public safety, said the complaints of illegal and unjustified overtime involving several police officers will be taken seriously. And last week, Major General Mark Hashimoto of the U.S. Marine Forces Pacific, together with other senior military officials, met with Governor Arnold Palacios, Lieutenant Governor David Apatang, Tinian Mayor Edwin Aldon, Senator Jude Hofschneider, and other CNMI officials to provide an initial update on where the Marines are in the planning process for adjustments to the CNMI Joint Military Training Proposal. This included discussions on the CJMT Environmental Planning process for the next year and beyond, and updates on DOD-funded projects and initiatives that have been underway for the last few years, such as road paving in Tinian, the Tinian Harbor improvements, community projects, and military training in the CNMI. Finally, from the variety, Atkins Kroll is objecting to the Annex Ocean View Hill Saipan Homeowners Association Limited's request to the Superior Court to stop the construction of AK's car dealership and repair shop in Puerto Rico. The homeowner said they filed their case against the zoning board to protect the residents' health, safety and welfare, as well as right to quiet enjoyment of 175 people in their own homes. According to Atkins Kroll, which is represented by attorney Rodney Jacob, the Superior Court lacks jurisdiction over the homeowner's petition. For more on these stories and others, pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety or visit mvariety.com. Coming up, Polly delivers your Pacific Daily News headlines and a recap of Governor of Guam, Lourdes Leon Guerrero's State of the Island Address held Wednesday evening. This is Buenas in the Morning. The health of our community is our number one priority. Our people deserve access to integrated medical services here at home. And Guam's medical campus project is rapidly evolving from a notional future project to a current state-of-the-art quality health services center for Guam and the region. To learn more about the Guam Medical Campus and plans for land and infrastructure, financing, medical services and more, visit us online at guammedicalcampus.com today. Welcome back to Buenos Biba Betnis, Guaucy Polly Suba. Here are your top stories from the Pacific Daily News. 
Guam Fire Department rescue units were at Arodi Point last night in response to a report of a missing free diver. The 31-year-old man was spearfishing with the group and failed to return to the boat. According to GFD spokesman Nick Garrido, GFD is continuing the search today. Along with the Guam Police Department, the U.S. Coast Guard and Helicopter Sea Combat Squadron 25. And a new Guam Memorial Hospital must have the ability to handle mass casualties and must provide other specific medical equipment and services if the government of Guam wants to lease military-owned land in Mingilao for free, according to Navy Rear Admiral Benjamin Nicholson. He said those hospital services will benefit the military and all Guam residents. And thousands of government employees could see a 22% pay raise effective April 1st, but lawmakers aren't likely to approve funding for the raise by then. Legislation to fund the raises through the end of the fiscal year in September to the tune of about $23 million failed to make it onto the session agenda Thursday. And lawmakers had good and bad to say about the governor's plans to lease land from the military for a new hospital complex, keep taxes on businesses high to fund education and safety, and push for a GovGuam pay raise. Democrat Senator Joe San Augustine, who was in agreement with many of the spending priorities laid out by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, said he plans to push for the $23 million general pay raise. In other news, the Tumuning Tumon Harmon Municipal Planning Council opposes a proposed 37-story hotel in Tumon, which was touted to be the tallest building in Guam at up to 492 feet. The council cited extreme height and close proximity to the shoreline. The final decision rests with the Guam Land Use Commission, which could overturn or sustain the decision. The commission's next tentative meeting is April 13th. And hauling abandoned vehicles for recycling this fiscal year has started using an initial $533,600 in purchase orders from the Guam Environmental Protection Agency. Mayor said it's best for residents to contact their mayor's offices for old vehicles on their private property to be included on the removal list. And finally, from the PDN, 12 semifinalists for the 2024 Guam Teacher of the Year were announced Thursday by the Guam Department of Education and the Foundation for Public Education. The 12 semifinalists will move on to the interview phase of the selection process, which will determine which teachers will be selected as the six finalists. For more on these stories and others, log on to GuamPDN.com. And Imaga Hagen Guahan Lu Leon Guerrero gave her State of the Island address on Wednesday evening and covered a number of topics such as eliminating the government's debt, unemployment dropping from 7% to 4%, skilled workforce development, supporting a new 20 million round of local employer assistance program, island sustainability in keeping the business privilege tax at 5%, protecting existing appropriations to DOE, GPD, and Guam Behavioral Health, and targeting the continued surplus for repairing schools, reinforce the fight against drugs and crime prevention. Historically, about 85% of all Guam business pay a BPT of less than 5%. Moreover, lowering the BPT for the top 15% of business earners would mean removing more than $65 million in general fund revenues annually. These are revenues paid by federal contractors and other benefiting from the military buildup, which are among the wealthiest entities licensed to do business in Guam. Before you leave here tonight, contemplate this. What makes Guam a better place to live and do business. Safer schools and safer streets are yet another tax cut for some of the nation's largest defense contractors. Senators, if you expect better schools and facilities, do not roll back BPT. If you expect a decrease in crime and less drugs on our streets, do not roll back BPT. The governor took time to push for an updated increase of the general pay plan for government employees, as well as leverage federal and private partnerships to continue building affordable homes led by the private sector. The governor also focused her address on the relationship between the military and her administration, stating they are working closely with Admiral John Acalino of Indo-PACOM and Admiral Ben Nicholson and Joint Region Marianas to stand as partners on the Watchtower of Freedom and keep Guam safe for all those who call it home. Whether you are a son or daughter of Guam, 
or a resident here from a compact state, we cannot build a new prosperity on our island without building a new hospital. I have always been clear on this. To that end, I will sign a long-term lease with the federal government, citing the Guam Medical Campus at the old Eagles Field. Senators Joe San Augustine, Frank Bloss Jr., Roy Canata, Dwayne San Nicholas, and William Parkinson attended a meeting with Governor Leon Guerrero and Admiral Nicholson to discuss the medical campus being built in Mingilao. As a result, Speaker Therese Talai sent a press release stating, unilateral actions without transparency or consent from the people of Guam only moves us backwards and not forward. I was able to get a response from the speaker after the governor's address. So your press release, your statement at 5.30 this morning. Then we saw a couple responses from senators, the governor as well, and then hearing again the State of the Island address that the governor will be signing a lease for Eagles Field. Uh, has your response changed in any way? Do you still feel passionately uh, how you felt in your statement at 5.30 this morning? Well, what I'm asking for is that the leases with the federal government be vetted by the people of Guam, that they be vetted by the legislature as representatives of those people, and that they know the details before we obligate future generations to we don't even know what yet, right? And so the terms have completely changed. What we agreed uh, to fund is now, uh, that was up to a billion dollars now, right? Now it looks like we don't know the cost, and um, the lease is... Um, maybe up to 75 years now. So, of course, yes, I still believe, just like the bill that we sent to the governor and that's on her desk right now, that contracts in, of that magnitude or projects of that magnitude should be vetted by the people of Guam. Absolutely. I'm not going to back down from that. And I really disagree with one person being able to in a room, make a deal that forgoes the obligations to landowners and the other people of Guam and the promises that have been made. I, I really think that that's, um, that should be something done as a matter of policy if you're going to go against what, what we have done as policy for decades, that that should be vetted and that should not be the power of one person. In her address, the governor said she also wants ancestral landowners to have their lands returned, and she will, will support the work of Guam's delegate in Congress, James Moylan, to fight for the return of lands from the federal government. Eagles Field is not returned land, and it has not been so for longer than many in this hole have been alive. Even if it were, federal law does not allow returned lands to be conveyed to ancestral landowners. If and when federal lands are returned, federal law directs that they are returned to our government for public use only. Building a hospital is public use. The use of the federal land for our hospital will benefit the whole of our island and the Micronesian region. This is the Chamorro spirit of Azuda. In the governor's statement responding to Speaker Talai's release, it said that instead of asking to meet with Admiral Nicholson, the speaker chose to engage in political rhetoric that stokes the flames of anti-American and anti-military sentiment. Oh, there's a lot of name calling going on right now, and um, that name calling is not going to stop me from doing what the people put me here to do. That is to get the facts of what these deals are, put them on the table, and make sure they are fair for Guam, make sure that um, what accountability or promises that have made, been made for the people of Guam, that we're gonna hold them to it. And we're not gonna let, that no one person gets to let them go. And I think asking questions and asking for transparency and demanding the truth is, is a very patriotic thing to do. And finally, in her address, the governor said she sent Speaker Talai in the previous legislature a bill that would provide a long overdue method of just compensation previously denied to families whose lands the federal government seized and which remain under federal ownership or control today. Yet that bill sat in committee with no action taken while the term expired. Before my second term is out, I believe we will build in our current success 
making healthcare more affordable for our families and more accessible to our people. As I stand here tonight, I reflect on each of the last four years. While every generation is called to leave its marks upon the world, few are asked to defend their home in a time of maximum peril and promise to rebuild stronger and come back wiser. That is the solemn task to which we are summoned. And so with history as our witness and prosperity for all our only reward, let us do the work of better days. God bless you and God bless Guam. You can watch the entire State of the Island Address on our PBS YouTube channel and you can find the sentiments of Speaker Teresa Lai, Senator Frank Blas Jr., Senator Joe Sinagustine, and Senator Chris Barnett minutes after the governor's address, after, it, after the address concluded on our Buenas in the Morning Instagram. After the break, we'll hear from Master of Tomorrow Dance and Guam's National Folk Dance Director Vince Regis on a performing arts initiative that seeks to unite, diversify, and showcase the Guam story through the arts. Be Babetness, Marianas. What is in half a day, Marianas? For the past year, we've been bringing you your morning headlines from the Pacific Daily News and the Marianas Variety into your homes at 7 a.m. We're excited to announce that What is in the Morning is now... dun da 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 What is later in the morning? We're gearing up to give you more features, more insight, and more focus. Well, let's be honest. The coffee doesn't actually kick in for me until 9 a.m. anyway, so let's just own it. We're right here with you, getting you prepared, productive, and informed beginning at 9 a.m every weekday morning. The new time slot begins February 13th on PBS Guam and the CNMI. Welcome back to Buenos. In a recent presentation of the Department of Tomorrow Affairs Heat to the Lecture Series, a former Guam Department of Education teacher, cultural dance group director, and master of Tomorrow Dance shared his plans to perpetuate, diversify, and expose local fine arts all the more. Here's Alana Chargloff of Fison with the details. Widely known as the director of Guam's Net Ngef Pakgu Cultural Arts Program, National Folk Dance Director and Master of Chamorro Dance Vince Regis, now serving out of the Guam Council of the Arts and Humanities Agency, presented NEPA, the National Indigenous Performing Arts Initiative, during a HITA, or Heritage, Ideas, Traditions and Art Talk, on March 3rd at the Guam Museum. The NEPA vision is to successfully implement a vibrant, credible and reputable performing arts program that will serve as a platform for collaboration and opportunities in building Guam's performing artists while contributing to Guam's economy and way of life. What we want to do is celebrate the indigenous community of Guam. So of course when we talk about indigenous we talk two things, right? One is the indigenous people and the indigenous stories and then we talk about what is some of the indigenous stories of the island. So for example, uh, not just about a Chamorro legend or Chamorro culture, but we can also talk about the Chinese Guamanian experience. So we want to talk about the Filipino Guamanian experience. Uh, and so, or we can even talk about contemporary Guam, like we can do a ballet to a J.D. Crutch song or, or, or things like that. So that's what the initiative is about. Though still in the listening and planning phases, considering Guam's multicultural and multifaceted community with many ways to tell stories, NEPA intends to unite these arts and increase their visibility. Of course, many of our com cultural communities that are out there are already doing the work. I just saw a dragon dance for the, uh, the Taipei uh, uh, International Club. Uh, and uh, then I'd, I'd love to see a Filipino dance and a Filipino song that kind of conveys the, their experience on Guam. So yeah, it's kind of this mix of, 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 of and layers of, of our culture, our island culture as a whole, uh, and, uh, and be able to find platforms for them to express that. Raja shared projected programs and events for 2023, such as NEPA listening tours, a Guam Department of Education and CAHA Performing and Fine Arts Internship Academy, participation in the Federation of International Dance Festivals tours and Setlu Arts and Identity Conference in San Diego, California, 
the Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture, dance competitions, and many events and programs like photo essays on dance as an indigenous expression, a Femalao and Guahan concert, a liberation music event, a theatrical production, and the Marianas Islands International Dance and Arts Festival, or Meetoff, a coming together of all types of folk arts, art media, and culturally creative symbols that are more accessible to the public, bringing the world to Guam's villages and to share the talents of those within the villages with the world. This is going to be one of Kaha's signature events um, uh, and what Meetoff is is a celebration of dance and arts but throughout the Marianas. So it's a two-week festival. It starts off first in Saipan, then it goes to Tinian and Rota and then to Guam. And, uh, and that is going to be amazing for us because we decided to not have one major festival but have three personalized and intimate festivals in the villages. So instead of one festival where people go to, we actually go to the northern site, and then we do uh, performances there, and then we go to the central, and then the south. And the cool thing about the south is the line with their coconut festival, and I believe their San Jose Fiesta, so it's actually going to be a big thing. Roy just shared that they are working closely with Frankie McJohn and Beyond the Reef Music Festival, who will be taking the lead in much of the programming and planning. And Roy just himself is the Oceania a chair for the Federation of International Dance Festivals, connecting him with a network of groups that can potentially share their cultures in Guam, as Regis has brought Guam's representatives out to showcase the local culture in different parts of the world. This year we're hoping to bring two groups out to Europe, and then we have one group, uh, one combined Oceania group, which is going to be really cool, because this combined Oceania group um, is going to be a combination of other Pacific islands, and we're going to bring the the best or hopefully the best of all the other islands and we're, then we're going to do a tour with that. So instead of one island at a time, we do one, one nice island, one big Oceania group and then we perform together. So that's going to be amazing because already we have uh, buy-in from Tahiti, which is exciting. So we'll, we'll, Tahiti with Guam and other islands are going to come together and make this amazing show. Regis explained the ways this initiative and all that comes with it will uplift Guam and its people. I think through the pandemic we've all realized that art, for me at least, I realized that art was the balance. When things were difficult and when life was hard, where do we turn to? We turn to a nice song, we turn to a nice photo, we go on Instagram and we look at what people, what other people are doing and what they're posting and, and then we, we, listen to a, uh, we listen to the sound of the waves or we paint or we draw or we do something that kind of gives us a relief. So I always believe that art is just as, as important as many of the other uh, initiatives that are happening uh, or, or, or disciplines that are happening uh, uh, in our lives. So art is a way for us to elevate our community. It's a way for us to take some breathing space. It's a way for artists to be able to express themselves. For Buenas, I'm Alana Chargulov of Faisen. Another goal of NEPA is the establishment of a national folk dance company. And don't miss the meet off events in the Sinai and here in Guam happening later in April. For event details, you can check out Kaha's Facebook and Instagram. The Kaha team invites you to support these events. And if you're interested in grant funding, sharing your dreams and aspirations, or if there are things you'd like to see in the community, you can email info at kaha.guam. Dot gov. Stay tuned for today's COVID recovery report, weather and more. Biba Betnis Marianas. The health of our community is our number one priority. Our people deserve access to integrated medical services here at home. And Guam's medical campus project is rapidly evolving from a notional future project to a current state-of-the-art quality health services center for Guam and the region. To learn more about the Guam Medical Campus and plans for land and infrastructure, financing, medical services, and more, visit us online at guammedicalcampus.com today. The latest Joint Information Center release, number 1168, continues to announce that COVID-19 vaccinations are available for homebound individuals. For information on vaccination sites and hours and to arrange in-home vaccinations for 
homebound persons with disabilities and senior citizens, call 311 and select option 2. To view the most up-to-date COVID-19 information, including weekday surveillance summary reports, visit dphss.guam.gov slash COVID-19 or guamrecovery.com. For inquiries, contact 311 through a local number. Now, here are some of the latest traffic advisories from the Guam Transportation Program. Between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. today, portions of the eastbound outer lane between Biang Street in Mighty and the Route 8, Route 10, Route 16 tri-intersection will be closed for road striping and marking. And in Tamuning from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., the contractor will be surveying along E.T. Calvo Memorial Parkway to the Guam Premier Outlets on Route 14, Challenge San Antonio for the resurfacing of Route 14. Flaggers will be present to assist surveyors. Motorists are advised to drive cautiously through construction zones, observe all posted speed limit and construction signs, and carefully heed flaggers when present. Taking alternate routes and adjusting your drive times when feasible are encouraged. PBS Guam wants to wish our Kid Club members a happy birthday. Rayleigh Benaventi, Alana Pangalainen, Bastian Morales, Evan Kinga, Alexandria Sunga, Atisa Mantanani, Helena Pangalainen, Aria Alfisher, Jemaya Nauta, Lucas Mosnes, Revan Tahadi, Miguel Atalik, Aiden Chase, Robin Cruz, Micah Tovez, Cheyani Benaventi, Misha Pernia, Xavier Padua, Marcus Cruz, Mackenzie Cruz, and Josiah Nalta. Happy birthday! On behalf of our PBS family, thanks for tuning in. Have a nice weekend, and we'll see you next at 9 a.m. Monday. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program. Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety.